I thank you for that introduction. Um, and I'd first like to thank the moderi moderators for giving me the opportunity to present my talk. HIV infection is associated with a persistent dysfunction of the gastrointestinal immune system, which is not restored with effective antiretroviral therapy. In particular, progressive HIV infection is associated with the preferential loss of antimicrobial Th17 cells, which are themselves regulated by the commensal microbiota. In antiretroviral treated individuals, the ongoing loss of, microbial, uh, of antimicrobial Th17 cells correlates with ongoing microbial translocation and dysbiosis. Given the known role of the commensal microbiota uh, in promoting the development of Th17 cells, we previously considered that treating uh, chronically SIV infected macaques with probiotics might result in a recovery of intestinal immunity. In this previous study, we observed that treatment with probiotics and antiretrovirals resulted in an increase in intestinal CD4 T cells as compared to controls. Among Th17 cells, we observed an increase in the function of these cells as measured by the ability to express multiple cytokines. However, we did not observe a recovery of cells as compared to control animals. As the Pyardini lab has recently demonstrated that IL-21 treatment during acute SIV infection results in the transient retention of Th17 cells, we considered that treating our animals with probiotics, IL-21, and antiretrovirals might promote Th17 recovery during chronic infection. In our current study, we infected 11 pigtail macaques with 3,000 TCID50 of SIV MAC239, and at day 98 post-infection treated all animals with the reverse transcriptase inhibitors, PMPA and FTC, as well as with the integrase inhibitor L812. Of our animals, six additionally received daily probiotic via cell number three, which consists predominantly of bifidobacter and lactobacillus species, as well as early and late administration doses of IL-21. We routinely sampled the blood and stool of all of our animals, and at predetermined intervals, additionally collected BAL and lymph node, rectal, and jejunal biopsies. We monitored lymphocyte frequency and function by flow cytometry, employing an event cutoff of 100 cells. We first began by assessing the impact of our treatment on viral suppression. As shown in this graph, with the probiotic and IL-21 treated animals in blue and our ARV-only control animals in black, infection was associated in all animals with a rapid rise in plasma viral load and a decline to a lower set point. With the initiation of our therapies, all animals exhibited a rapid decline in plasma viremia, with most continuing to maintain viral load at the limit of detection for the remainder of the study. Within our probiotic and IL-21 treated group, we did have one animal that continued to maintain a uh, viremia of approximately 100 copies per mil, but this was not associated with worsened disease progression as this animal continued to maintain the highest CD4 T cell frequencies um, of all our study animals. We next looked at the impact of our treatment on CD4 T cell recovery. As uh, we previously demonstrated with probiotic supplementation alone, probiotic and IL-21 treatment resulted in a significant increase in intestinal CD4 T cells, as shown in the jejunum for the left and the rectal biopsy on the right, when compared to the pretreatment time point. We did not observe any significant differences as compared to or among the ARV-only controls, and we did not observe any differences systemically. These results are consistent with probiotic and IL-21 treatment having the greatest effect at the sites which are themselves the most resistant to recovery following antiretroviral therapy. We next looked at the impact of our treatment on immune activation. IL-21 is a potent immunostimulatory agent and any activation induced by it could negate the previously reported uh, effects using probiotic supplementation alone. However, as shown in these graphs, we did not observe any increases in immune activation among the probiotic and IL-21 supplemented animals as compared to the ARV-only controls for any of the tissue compartments examined. In fact, within the rectal tissues, we observed significantly less immune activation immediately following the initiation of treatment therapy. We further did not observe any differences when we looked at HLA-DR expression on memory CD4 cells or when we looked at the CD8 T cell compartment, thus suggesting that our treatment did not promote immune activation. We next looked at the impact of our treatment on the frequencies of IL-17 expressing memory CD4 T cells, also known as TH17 cells. As shown in this graph, we did observe significant increases as compared to the pretreatment time point in both the jejunum at day 126 and day 274 post-infection, and within the rectal tissues at day 365 post-infection. Although we did observe a significant difference with regards to rectal TH17 cells between the two groups at day 126, 
We did not observe any significant differences among the ARV-only controls when we compared any individual time points, thus suggesting that our treatment did promote the recovery of intestinal Th17 cells as compared to control animals. We additionally looked at the frequency of polyfunctional Th17 cells, or those cells which in our hands additionally expressed IL-2, IL-22, or TNF-alpha. High frequencies of polyfunctional cells have been shown to correlate with improved disease progression, and so we were interested in determining if there was an increase in the absolute frequency of these cells. As demonstrated in these graphs, we did observe significant increases as compared to the pretreatment time point at multiple time points post-infection within our probiotic and IL-21 supplemented animals. We did not observe any significant differences among the ARV-only control animals. These results are consistent with probiotic and IL-21 therapy promoting Th17 cell recovery within the intestinal tissues, which in turn translated to an, absolute, um, an increase in the absolute frequencies of polyfunctional Th17 cells. Recent data has demonstrated that um, elevated levels of the tryptophan catabolizing enzyme in doliamine 2,3-deoxygenase, or IDO, is associated with ongoing Th17 cell losses during ARV treatment and ongoing microbial translocation. To determine if our treatment uh, altered IDO expression, we isolated colonic and mesenteric lymph node tissue samples from our animals and looked at IDO staining by immunohistochemistry. As shown on the left for colonic tissues, we did observe a trend for reduced IDO expression in our probiotic and IL-21 supplemented animals as compared to controls. This was absent within the mesenteric lymph nodes, again suggesting that probiotic and IL-21 therapy had the greatest effect within intestinal tissues. Finally, we were interested in determining if our treatment was associated with improved health. Among our ARV-only control animals, three animals exhibited complications due to SIV or antiretroviral treatment, with one animal eventually requiring euthanasia. Within the probiotic and IL-21 supplemented group, no animal exhibited signs of overt or infection or distress for the entire study period. We used the mantel cox rank method of comparing survival rates to determine if there was a difference in, the, in uh, the time to the first presentation of disease complication between the two groups. By this method, we determined that there was a significant difference, suggesting that probiotic and IL-21 therapy significantly improved the health of our treated animals. In conclusion, probiotic and IL-21 supplementation of ARV therapy during chronic SIV infection in pigtailed macaques significantly improved disease progression. This was associated with improved intestinal CD4 T cell frequencies, an improvement in Th17 cell frequency and functionality within the intestinal tissues, and a decrease in health complications. Our treatment did not promote immune activation, and it did not negatively impact viral load suppression. Now, although our treatment did uh, show the value of IL-21 in promoting Th17 cell regeneration, we were unable to identify the particular mechanism by which Th17 regeneration is normally defective. However, our treatment does show that it is in fact possible to promote Th17 regeneration in the context of antiretroviral therapy. Additionally, although our animals did um, exhibit improved health, we would be interested in determining whether the improved frequencies and functions of cells were so would be associated with challenge from a mucosal, um, would be associated with protection from a mucosal challenge, thereby formally demonstrating improved immunity. Lastly, we are actively determining whether our treatment was associated with a restoration of the commensal microbiota and a reduction in microbial translocation, and whether any such changes, if present, would correlate with the improved disease progression that I described. Finally, I would like to thank my mentor, Jason Brenchley, for allowing me to work on this project and to thank all the members of my lab for their assistance. We would like to acknowledge the veterinary staff at the NIH and the Viral Corps for their help. I'd like to thank Jake Estes for his help with the immunohistochemistry, Mirko Pyridini and Francois Villinger for providing the IL-21, Michael Miller and Daria Huzudi for, pro for providing the antiretrovirals, Claudio De Simone for providing the VSL-3, and I'd like to thank you, the audience, for your time and attention. I will gladly take any of your questions.